book. If I can get Sister Lori to help me out. first.
I'm coming your way, God, I promise. 21. 21, thank you. Yeah.
Anybody else got a soul? Anybody? All right. Grab your Bibles. I won't be before you very long tonight. Just a very sober, direct message. It might be for somebody watching on the internet, YouTube, whatever it may be. But I know that the Lord put this on my heart, so I'm going to try my best to obey Him for a few minutes. If the message tonight had a title, it would be, Don't Miss This for Nothing. Hey, don't miss this for nothing. Turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. And then if you want to go ahead a little bit later, I'll be going to Acts 24 and Acts 26. So we will start over here in Mark chapter number 10. I'll start reading. Uh, let me see. I'll start reading in verse number. Number 17. I'll just go ahead and start at the beginning. If you find your place, say Amen. I want everybody listening and everybody in this church to have 100% full assurance when we leave here tonight that we know without a shadow of a doubt that we're saved, born again, and washed by the blood of the Lamb. So let's, let's keep that in mind. If you know without a shadow of a doubt, then this ought to bring you pleasure that you know. If you don't, then you need to do something about it. And if you know that you fall in that category, that you know that you know, then pray that somebody else uh, might have that assurance that you have tonight. There's so many stories uh, that you hear of people that sit in church all their life, held offices in the church, positions in the church, and later on in life, they really realize they'd never been saved. Even the great Billy Graham said he was in church and was a member for four years of a church that he was in when he realized that he wasn't a blood-bought child of God. And the Lord brung, opened his eyes and he received salvation. Uh, so it, if it can happen to the likes of Brother Billy Graham, it sure could happen to us. A lot of people, uh, they'll say things about Billy Graham. I think he's one of the greatest evangelists uh, that's ever uh, darkened the door. He's not like the TV preacher's. Uh, that we have on the day. I don't have much stock and hardly of any of them, but he would get on there and I've heard him preach numerous times that you must be born again and that you have to repent from your sins, not just believing in God, that you must repent and turn from your sins and follow Jesus Christ. And man, I appreciate that man of God standing up and preaching the word of God and uh, I want to do the same tonight. So if you have your place, just say amen. amen. Okay, and we had gone forth unto the way. There came one running and kneeled down to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto them, Why callest thou me good? For there is none good but one, and that is God. So that right there goes to tell us when you look at your little old kids, and I know what I'm, I'm just I'm being a jerk for a minute. But when you look down at your little old kids and you pat them on the head and say you're a good boy, you're lying to them. When you get them little old girl and you pat her on the head and pull her little pigtail, say boy you're a good girl, you lying to them. The Bible said there's none good, no, not one, except who? Except God, the Father of light. Amen. And that's what Jesus is telling uh, this rich young ruler right here. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. And said unto him, I'll go back to that in a minute. One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at the saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. You can be seated. I want to back up right here just for a few minutes and take a look at this young man's life. Now, it was their custom 
uh, for the Jewish folks. Uh, uh, they went to the Sabbath on the Sabbath day. Uh, they went to the temple and prayed at the time that it was called on them to pray. Most of these people were very devout. Man, if you said something down in front of them uh, that was not a meat that they would eat, they would turn away. Uh, you've heard me preach about how they come to the disciples and said that they defiled themselves by not uh, washing their hands. And Jesus said, it's not what's on the outside uh, that defiled man, but it's what's on the inside that defiled. So these, uh, these Jewish young men, they were very devout in following the law and then the commandments right down to the letter. It was brought up in them. Uh, from little old children, but you know, he all the, evidently uh, he hears something different uh, than he had ever heard before. He began to hear about eternal life. I don't know if he heard Jesus preaching. I don't know if he heard some of the disciples preaching. Uh, but Lord, he heard something that made him come running. And now he done confessed right here that he had kept all these commandments uh, from his youth. Though so when he come to the Lord and asked about eternal life, brother Laddie, he already knew that he was lacking something because he knew that he didn't have that. Uh, Brother Larry, I've known you most of my life, but thank God during the revival back when Jason Nunley was here, uh, the Holy Ghost come to you, brother, and I remember it, and no matter what you had, maybe uh, Larry's always been a good man, long as I known him. I uh, probably honored his father and mother. He didn't steal. He didn't kill. I know I just got through saying we can't say nobody's good, uh, but that being said, if you'd have come to me, I'd have said, boy, old Larry's a good man. But yet, uh, he lacketh one thing, amen. And thank God, it didn't matter how good he was. It didn't matter how bad he was. Uh, the Holy Ghost come to him in that revival and said, Larry, you lacketh uh, one thing. And Brother Larry got up being drawn by the Holy Ghost. And he's about as far up under here as you can get. And he called on Jesus uh, to come and save him from his sins. And I'll be here to testify. And I, you hear Brother Larry testify about it. Uh, he ain't never been the same, amen. Uh, when you meet Jesus and you have salvation, uh, you'll never be the same. If you come up here and you bow down uh, with worldly sorrow and you're sad about your situation, uh, you're sad because you lost your boyfriend, you're sad because you lost your girlfriend, you're sad because your job ain't going right, uh, you're worried about sickness or, or something like that, uh, you're about to lose your house, and oh, they'll come up here and they'll cry crocodile tears and they'll say, I want to do better. I'm tired of living that way. Uh, but you rest assured, uh, people will come up and they'll say, oh, so-and-so got saved. Hey, they call me Debbie down at the house, uh, but that's all right. I said, that's yet to be seen, amen. I said, if they ain't been saved, it'll show up in the wash. And if they ain't, uh, they'll go back to acting uh, just like they acted. Uh, when you meet Jesus, it changes your life uh, from the inside out and you become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, you no longer follow after the ways uh, that you used to go. Uh, Jesus said, take up your cross and what? He said, follow me. I told you the other night in a message you'll never see Jesus uh, go into the bar. He'll never go to the concerts. Uh, he'll never go to the pool hall. Amen. Uh, so if you're still going to those places, uh, you are not following Christ Jesus. Period. Amen. But we see that this young ruler, the Lord begins to tell him. He says, hey, he said, what must I do? to inherit eternal life. Boy, he heard something good about that. And all of a sudden, he seen the man. He seen the man that was offering eternal life. Ain't you glad for the day that you seen the man? Hey, I've heard about Jesus all my life, Lord. Uh, but the day I got saved, uh, Brother Donnie Roman, I seen him in a different light that morning. I didn't just see him as Jesus. I didn't just see him as King. Uh, but I seen him as my Savior. And I seen myself, amen, uh, hanging over hell by a thread uh, with no hope, Laddie Slagle. But that day I seen Jesus uh, for my Myself. And when I got my eyes fixed on him and he got his eyes fixed on me, I wasn't worried about who was sitting beside me. I wasn't worried about who was in front of me. I just knowed I had to get to that man uh, to get my help and to get that eternal life. Uh, my heart was beating out of my chest. I couldn't wait to get to the altar and meet this man Jesus that I'd known all my life. But I was about to meet him as Savior that day and he was about to change my life uh, forever, amen. Amen. 
That rich young ruler, he knew about God. He knew about the commandments. He had been to church. He had kept them. He just thought he was a pretty good fellow. But all of a sudden, he seen that man, Jesus, uh, that was offering eternal life. is the best thing he had ever heard of. He said, man, I got to meet him. And the Bible said that he come running to him and he knelt down. Hey, I've seen a lot of folks, Lori Nichols, it's sad to say, uh, come running up here to this altar and they'll slide up here and they'll kneel down. Uh, but yet they leave and they're back out in the world uh, serving the same same old devil uh, that they are to serve. The Bible tells us a man can't serve two masters, that he'll cleave to one and love him and he'll hate and despise the other. Hey, when you get Jesus in your life and you confess your sin and repent, uh, you'll no longer go down to the hog pen and play down there. And if you return down there, Dwayne Ray, uh, you'll be miserable in your sin. Uh, you'll be miserable and God will let you die down there or you'll run back up here to an order of repentance and get things right with the Lord. Amen. But we see he'd kept all these things. The Lord said, well, this is what you got to do. He said, well, I've done that. Whew. I've got her. The Lord looked at him. And the Bible said what? That he loved him. Jesus loved that young man. He loves you and he loves me. And that's why I get up here. Till my throat's gone, Mike, and I ain't, my voice ain't even the same no more since I began to preach. I go to speak out in public, or especially on Mondays, and I can't even get my words to come out. And I do that because I love God, and I love his people, and I want to warn them, and I love preaching. I love proclaiming the gospel of Christ, and I don't do it ever to be mean. I do it that somebody might get help, that somebody might get saved, that somebody might not have to die and go to hell, and that's what Jesus done. He could have turned away and said, well, you're doing pretty good, young man. Are you keeping them commandments? Are you paying your tithes down at the church? I'm seeing you go in and out every Sunday. You're all right, but Jesus loved that young man, uh, so we had to tell him the truth. That's why we got to tell the folks truth, uh, because I love the dying world. I love the sinner man. You know why? Because I used to be him, and I ain't forgot what it's like to be uh, living out in sin and darkness, and how great it felt to come uh, to the night in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and I want every man, boy, and girl uh, to experience what I did uh, when I met Jesus, and I went to Calvary. Uh, so Jesus looked at him with love in his eyes and said, yet thou lackest uh, one thing. And he said, what am I lacking, Lord? Because the Bible said that he had many riches. And the Jesus said, hey, I want you to sell everything you got. I want you to sell everything you got and go give that to the poor. And the Lord said, I'll wait right here in this spot till you get back. And he said, then you're going to pick up your cross and you're going to bear it and follow me. Uh, that's what it's going to take to inherit eternal life. Uh, but they said that young man uh, that went sliding up there to Jesus and knelt down at his feet and said, I want this eternal life. He said, Lord, what must I do to have it? Uh, the Bible said that the Lord looked at him and told him what he had to do and the Bible said that he was grieved and went away sorrowful because he had much. I tell you what, I get up here and preach it and I say it and I don't mean it in the ignorance but I say salvation won't cost you anything. Jesus paid the price, the price on Calvary but it will cost you some stuff. It'll cost you that sinful lifestyle you're living. Amen. It'll cost you them sinful friends uh, that you run around with. It'll cost you them sinful places uh, that you go to. Oh, but don't let that get you down. And don't let that get you sad. That same Jesus, amen, that I knelt down. Uh, he'll give you more uh, than you ever had. He'll give you a new set of friends. He'll give you some new places to go. He'll give you a new attitude, amen. He'll put a song in your heart. He'll put a quick in your step, amen. He ain't going to leave you out there under a tree somewhere, under a juniper, uh, sulking in the moly groves. But he'll give you a brand new new song in your heart and peace uh, that goes beyond all understanding. But that rich boy went away sorrowful. He didn't want to give up what he had. Lord, don't let nothing, don't let nothing in your life. What's worth dying and going to hell for? You tell me something. I'm all ears. You tell me something, Jimmy McGinnis, that you got that's worth going to hell for. They ain't nothing. 
Jamie, as precious as your family is, your family ain't worth going to hell for. Somebody help me tonight. Folks is watching that think, well, that bunch ain't believing what he's saying. There ain't nothing on this side of eternity worth dying and going to hell for. And the Bible said it's easier for the camel to go through an eye of a needle than the rich man to go to heaven. It ain't wrong to have money, but it's wrong to love it, amen. And if you love it more than God, then you ain't going. He'll be first or he won't be at all. The Bible said he is a jealous God and there will be none or nothing before me. I ain't got enough money to hurt if I give it all away. But let me ask you something. If you've got a little bit of money and the Lord come to you and said, I want you to sell everything you got and give to the poor folks, would you do it? Or would you just hang on to it and die and go to hell? Ain't nothing worth dying and going to hell for. Let's look at this young man right quick. We'll hit a few more and go to the house. He was upstanding in the community. He went to church, probably paid his tithes, knowed the word of God, kept the word of God, but yet he lacked us one thing. What was that? Putting God first. Denying himself. Selling out to, you'll sell out to Jesus or you won't sell with Jesus. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? You'll sell out and go with Jesus or you won't sell with him when he leaves here. I want to sell with him when he leaves here, don't you? I'm willing to sell out to the world. I don't care if the world loves me. I don't care if they hate me. I don't care if they scorn me. There's one person in this world that I aim to please, and that's Jesus Christ, amen. Because when everybody else will let you down, he went all the way, amen. So I don't have to die and go to hell. So I want to bless his name for that. If we ain't careful, will that one little old thing hold us back? Turn with me over here. To Acts chapter number 26. Acts 26. Verse 27. We're going to read about old King Agrippa. Paul was standing before King Agrippa. And he began to preach to him and give him his story. King Agrippa give Paul the floor. And Paul being Paul. The power of the Holy Ghost got on him. And he began to preach to that king and pull his finger in his face and tell him about sin and tell him about eternal life uh, just like it was some pauper down the road. Let me tell you what, with Jesus Christ, it don't matter if you're good, it don't matter if you're bad, it don't matter if you're rich, it don't matter if you're poor, it don't matter if you're black, white, Mexican, Russian, whatever. There's no respect to person with Jesus Christ. He sees us as saved or he sees us as lost and that's the only thing that matters. So old Paul, he began to preach preach of Jesus Christ uh, to old King Agrippa. And old King Agrippa, he said when he was, when, when King Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me uh, to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am, except in these bonds. And I tell you what I begin to think about Old King the Gripper right here. He began to weigh the cost out. And he began to think about Christ. And King Agrippa, he began to sit right there and listen to one of the greatest preachers uh, that's ever been on earth. Uh, preach to him in the power of the Holy Ghost in front of his peers. And as he's preaching, I can see old King Agrippa. He, uh, Paul asked him, he said, do you believe in the prophets? And before old King Agrippa even got to answer, Paul said, I know uh, thou believe. How did he know that? Uh, because the Holy Spirit uh, was uh, speaking through Paul as he was preaching to the king. He believed the prophet. He believed the word. How in the world do you go to hell and believing in God? It ain't God that's going to save you. It's Jesus Christ and him alone. Uh, that's the problem with the world uh, that we're living in today. Uh, most of the folks that you meet, uh, they'll say I believe in God and that ain't going to get you to heaven. Uh, you 
you can believe in God all the way to hell and when you get to hell you're going to believe in him uh, more than you ever did uh, the only hope that we've got is through our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ uh, God made it that way amen he made Jesus a little bit lower uh, than the angels and he let him come down and leave heaven and die on an old rugged cross uh, so that me and you uh, could be accepted by the beloved uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ he is the way he is the truth he is the life and you'll get in no other way than by Jesus Christ that's a stumbling block the Jews it's to the stumbling block it's a, to the Jews it's a stumbling block and to this world that we're living in brother laddie it's still a stumbling block uh, people say I believe in God I'll be alright that ain't gonna get you in even believing in Jesus won't get you in it's believing on him amen and repenting of your sins amen. Repent means to be sorry that you've done it. And what? Turn from it. Amen. You've got to turn from it. You can be sorry about something and do it again. Amen. Believing ain't enough. It takes repentance. There ain't enough preaching on repentance anymore. Maybe I need to spend about a month on that, on what repentance really is and what it means and the effect of it. The Bible said the devils believe and fear and tremble, but we know where they're going, amen, and without the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life, you'll end up where they are, amen. amen. King Agrippa said, almost, almost thou had me persuaded to be a Christian. I seen a, when I began to study this today and I was reading on this, I began to think about stuff that almost, almost, is a huge word to be so little. I almost died in a motorcycle wreck, but I didn't. People can almost lose their life. People can almost get them a new house. They can almost get a new car. I was at the car dealership a while back looking, and there's a woman in there trying to get a car. She was so excited. The dealer came up to her and he said, ma'am, I'm sorry. He said, we was almost able to get you that car. But your credit score was just a little bit off. He said, maybe by next year. Um, I mean, she was so excited, but she missed it just by a little bit. Almost old King Agrippa, he believed in God. He believed in the prophets. And he almost was persuaded to be a Christian, but almost ain't good enough. Amen. Almost ain't going to get you in. If all said I would, that you was almost and all together as such as I am. I'm like old Paul. I know in whom I believe. Amen. I know in whom my faith is. I know in whom I'm trusted. I know who changed my life. I know I didn't turn over a leaf and try to do better. How do you know that preacher? Because I tried that route Dwayne and it didn't work. Amen. But thank God when Jesus got a hold of me, he changed me uh, from the inside out. Are you perfect? I am not. Uh, but now when I mess up and sin, uh, the Holy Ghost comes and can be me and I can't stand it until uh, I make me an altar of repentance somewhere and ask Jesus uh, to forgive me of my sin that's the difference hey man and being lost and being saved if you can go out here and live in your sin and talk how you want to and walk how you want to uh, the blood of Jesus Christ is not flowing through your veins hey amen we're letting people die and go to hell and we're patting them on the back and we're ushering them right in there uh, because we won't tell them the truth. If you love folks the truth, you'll tell them what their sins are and you'll tell them that Jesus is the remedy. Amen. Almost. King Agrippa was so close yet he rejected Christ. King Agrippa almost missed hell, but he didn't. How sad to be that close and die and go to hell. In the grim reality of it, every day, that man's burning in hell right now. And he's thinking, I almost, I almost didn't have to come here. I almost didn't have to come here. Oh, God, if I could go back, if I could just go back one time, everything I've ever worked for, I'd give it all to the poor. That rich young ruler, if he could come back, he'd, he'd beg and borrow and steal and give away everybody else's fortune too if he could get one chance. But you're only going to get one chance at this and you're only going to get one choice. You're going to receive Christ or you're going to reject him. You'll spend life in heaven or hell and there's no other way around it. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Acts chapter 24 and we'll go to the house. (coughs) 
Acts chapter 24 and verse 22. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, Well, this is the chief, chief, chief captain shall come down. I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty, that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. In certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was the Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Old Paul had been preaching. Old Felix had begun to hear about it. So he got his wife and he said, I want somebody to go down there and get this man that's preaching Jesus. I want a private revival at the house. I want to get him up here uh, so I can have a more perfect understanding on this matter. Hey, that's why we come to church. Uh, that's why we preach. There's folks out here in Facebook land and everywhere else that don't have a perfect understanding of what it is to be saved. And that's what I'm trying to do tonight uh, to give a more perfect understanding uh, so folks don't have to die and go to hell. He began to hear about it, but he didn't understand it. So he had Paul come, and Paul began to preach to him. And the Bible said, and he reasoned of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, go thy way for this time. And when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. I tell you what, you won't get saved any time that you want to. I've heard people say, oh, you can get saved anytime you want to. I don't believe that. I believe it takes the Holy Ghost uh, dealing with your life. I believe it takes the Holy Ghost giving you that, that spirit and that conviction uh, before you can receive Jesus Christ. And old Felix, I believe he is under conviction. The Bible said he had the fear and that he was trembling. I mean, he, he felt that conviction, uh, yet he passed up uh, his opportunity. And he's in hell today, uh, just like the rich young ruler uh, just like King Agrippa uh, Felix is in there and he said Paul I like the sound of this he said I like the sound of it but he said I want to I want to think about this he said I'll call you back at a more convenient time you know what he did he put off the day of salvation my Bible said today is the day of salvation now is the appointed time you'll get saved when the Holy Ghost is dealing with you or you won't get saved at all that's why it's so important uh, when you're sitting back there and you got that doubt or your heart's about to beat out of your chest and you're scared to meet the maker uh, that you get out of your uh, seat and come up here to an altar of repentance and see Christ while he's able to be received or you'll end up like Felix in a devil's hell. He kept waiting for a more convenient time uh, but I never read uh, where he ever called Paul back and got saved by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, so therefore, I believe with all my heart that he died and went to hell uh, waiting for a more convenient time. Hey, right now is the time, folks. We ain't promised tomorrow. I go to funerals all the time. Young folks, old folks, car wreck, heart attack, murder. You don't know what it could be. Take you out of here. You're not promised tomorrow, but even more than that, you're not promised that the Holy Ghost will ever deal with your heart again. And every time, Dwayne Ray, that somebody turns the Lord away, I believe that heart gets harder. It gets easier to say no. It gets easier to say no. And I've heard story after story where people's dying to get saved now, uh, but the Holy Ghost won't deal with them again and they're worried to death. Oh, it's a precious and it's a delicate thing. And it's something that you don't wait for a convenient time. It's always convenient when the Savior is calling not to have to die and go to hell. Hey, don't let anything make you miss it. Swallow your pride. Don't worry about your friends. Don't worry about your mom and dad. There's nothing more important than knowing that you know, that you know, that you know, that you're saved. Amen. Diane, come to the piano. I'm done. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to be real short with the invitation. I want to ask you tonight as I was preaching this did you have joy and peace in your heart thinking I know what you're talking about preacher and I'm glad that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved I ain't scared to death 
If I know we're going to walk out that door into gunfire and I'll die, I have no worries where I'll spend eternity. If that's you, could you raise your hand up and say, I know that I know that I know. But boy, if there's anybody here that you've got some doubt with nobody looking around, would you raise your hand up and say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure. Preacher, I ain't 100% sure. If I know that I'd face Jesus tomorrow, I don't know. I'm not different like you say. Would you raise your hand up and say, Preacher, would you pray for me? Anybody? I want to speak to those that's watching this on video. If you're not sure that you're saved and you've got wrestling with doubt and fear and the Holy Ghost is dealing with you right now, I want to ask you to get down somewhere. You don't have to be in church. And I want you to ask Jesus to save you and ask Him to help you to repent of your sins and pick up your cross and follow Him. And if you'll mean that from your heart, He'll in no wise cast you out. But don't put it off. Don't wait till tomorrow because I'll tell you what will happen. You'll go to bed with this fear and trembling, but you'll wake up in the morning and the devil will tell you it's a fake. You better strike while the iron's hot. Anybody want to pray? Amen. Thank you for your attention to Lord, I'm glad I'm saved, don't you? I've got a lot of worries in this old life and I worry about a lot of other folks. One thing I don't worry about is where I'm going. I'm glad I've made my calling and election short. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Can you say amen to that tonight? Amen. Then you ought to be the happiest people on earth to know that if the sun don't come up tomorrow, we'll be standing in front of the S-O-N. Amen. Let's all stand. I appreciate your attention. Please don't forget, next Wednesday night, we'll be going down to meet with Brother Rick Woods at his church. Be praying for the revival. We'll be going on all this week. If you get a chance, go and support them. I pray for mine dying. They'll be traveling. They're bailing out on us, leaving us. I don't know what we're going to do.